Hello, everyone, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights. I am your host, Dear James, and my amazing co-host, the Lady Jacqueline, is off this week. And I am joining you from the beautiful Austin, Texas. Um, the word Austin means majestic, and we've been talking about auspicious encounters, these auspicious energies and times, and that is exactly the, the majesticness of this setting. And just to give a little recap of last week, the energies were out of time. This reset, renewal, and I just want to bring this up, you know, this out of time, moving beyond time, and that to fly like an eagle. And that we were, there was a completion and fulfillment of the promise, and the new begins. And again, auspicious encounters fly like an eagle. So, and we're in the eclipse season. The eclipse was just yesterday. The new moon partial solar eclipse was just yesterday on the 25th of October. And literally, as I'm talking about that, I just looked up and saw the, the time on my, on my laptop on the screen, and it's 10 one, 1001, 1001. And you're going to see how these ones, and then of course, the beauty of the zeros in the center um, and this way to this way through and as you're joining us so re keep in mind these auspicious encounters auspicious times majestic these double ones and you're going to see how this is playing out and playing through with us um, and as we always say Put in the comments that you're joining us and where you're joining us from. I can see Elizabeth is here from France. And right out of the gate, she says, what the heck is happening with the anger and angst people are throwing everywhere? So, yes, because remember, as the old falls, there is great fear. There's, there's trepidation. There's two camps. Remember, there's two camps. And so we need to be incredibly mindful, and this is eclipse season. So Elizabeth, to answer you directly right off the gate, remember eclipses amplify things. And this is uh, the eclipse from yesterday. It's a new moon in Scorpio. So, and it's conjunct the south node. And so that is going to be about what we release. The south node demonstrates what we release. The north node is where we're going. That comes up. That is going to be triggered on the uh, 8th of November, literally election day in the United States. And so you can see the beauty of this. And, and I know it's painful where you're saying the angst and the anger. You know, it's the angst, the anger, the resentment. Because the old, and you're going to see this in, in today's energies, the old is over. It doesn't appear that way. I know that on the outside, it looks like it's very strong and prevalent and regaining a foothold and so forth. It's not. It is, you know, it's like the burning embers. It's the last hurrah, so to speak. Ha ha. It's that last hurrah of, they're saying, of, of a dying breed, of a dying age, a dying era. And people are fearful. They don't want that to happen. And yet there's a whole set of people. There's, again, two camps. There's a whole set of people that are cannot wait for the new to, you know, to usher in, to arrive, to literally have a foothold, to be the new reality. And so remember, as one ends, it's like a domino effect. Remember that word, domino. <laughs> it's a domino effect. As one falls, the others, the others lift. And that's where we are with this energy. Brigitte is joining us saying, good morning, welcome. And Elizabeth is saying, and how can I keep myself safe? I just, I just got verbally attacked today and feel so broken. Remember, and this is for everyone. So Elizabeth, remember, and thank you for sharing that and for your openness and vulnerability. When something like that happens, it says everything about the other person. You being you, you being this heart-centered, receptive, gorgeous, beautiful soul. Your shining light, your shining beauty and joy and surrender and kindness and goodness. 
And so for lack of better words, what they're saying to me is, and thus you become, quote unquote, an easy mark. An easy mark meaning of demonstration, of, of being. And they're demonstrating their fear, their anxiety, their angst. And so, and you can simply, simply by being, when someone's joyful, when someone, you know, you can trigger people, you can, because you're just going about your business, you're just radiating joy, goodness. And yet they are radiating. And so there's a clash, you know, clash of titans is what they're saying. This clash. You haven't, you're, you're not responsible for their energy, their action and response, solely yours. So maintain, they're saying maintain your integrity, maintain your balance, maintain your surrender and your serendipitousness. <laughs> that was a hard one to get out <laughs> because what you're, what you're rippling out is goodness, joy auspiciousness the star you're going to see how all of this is playing we don't have to do that in any way you know we don't have to uh, place it upon others we don't have to force it however be mindful as well simply by radiating you know they're saying to me simply by radiating you can piss someone off <laughs> that's not your fault that's not your problem that's not your responsibility your responsibility is to carry your is to be the steward of joy of goodness of happiness of light in a way that is just be conscious they are the custodians of their experience so don't take it on that's for everyone listening and specifically for elizabeth do not allow their anger angst fear resentment whatever it is don't let that become your um your burden or your responsibility, it's not. It's not yours. Um, Brigitte is saying, I am sending, uh, I'm uh, feeling karma, the karma release. My body has been burning up. Yes, see, there's, this is this whole, remember that it was reset, renewal, advance. So we're advancing. When you know, you know. And and what that means is, you know, you know where you're going. You know that you're of the light, working with the light, in joy and happiness and surrender and peace. And that's, that's your responsibility. That's, the, that's what you're the custodian of. Theirs is theirs. So let it, and, and they're showing me the embers burning. It's, it's the, the phoenix, you know, the ashes. So we've got to go through the death of something. We've got to go through the release of it, the death of it. But the promise is that it's, re, you know, we're reborn. It's reborn. It's renewed. So what's dying? What's in the embers? The old. The anger. The purifying. It's the temperance card. The, the impure iron ore goes into the forge. We pound it. And all of the impurities come out. And what ultimately is received is the purity of what remains. And that's where we are. Elizabeth's just saying, thank you. Um, as soon as you said, you said that I laughed. <laughs> See, keep the joy in it. This is true. This is, and, and this is so on point for the theme today. They said the theme, it's, it's October 26th, so 10, 26, 2022. And they said stillness in knowing. So it's simply to have the resoluteness, the stillness, the knowing, the fortitude. It is not an aggressive energy. It is not one that we have to force or push upon others. That's what they were doing. That's the old, out with the old, it's gone. Because it's stillness in knowing. And then they said hyphen unity. So here we're coming into this stillness and knowing in the unity, in the, in the oneness of everything. And again, in the example that Elizabeth shared, yes, we are going to come up against or, or witness, bear witness to 
people's trauma, drama, resistance, anger, but it need not be ours. We need not take it on. We can simply be in the stillness of knowing, in the unity of knowing, because the first thing that they said, and, and we've got two hexagrams playing, so there's beautiful, two beautiful energies. The 26, which is controlled power, stillness. So look at uncontrolled power. There's Elizabeth's example, right? This anger and you know being confronted and yelled at. That's not controlled power. That's running roughshod. That's being aggressive. That's being unchecked, unbalanced undisciplined. And then we also have the eight, the two and the six become an eight. And so we have uniting. And this particular hexagram, hexagram eight, it's a very ancient, simple character that originally depicts two people side by side. And so there's a beauty in the fact of, so see how when, it, when we're in harmony, when we're in a stillness of knowing, it doesn't we don't need to express anything. It's like the truth. It does. It requires no explanation, no defense. The truth is the truth is the truth. It speaks for itself. So we have this when you're in unity and both with ourselves and with others. It speaks for itself. It doesn't need you can you can bear witness to. I was in Italy years ago, years ago as a, a much younger, and. We were walking after dinner, and there were two married couples, husband and wife. The two women were arm in arm. The two men were arm in arm. And they were strolling and after dinner. And there was such a beauty and a peace and a grace and a, and a love. And I remember saying to myself, ah, that's what it's meant to be like. There was no judgment. There was no, it was just unity. It was absolute beauty and unity and, and camaraderie um, and friendship and just grace. And that is the ideal. And, and leave it to the Italians, leave it to the beauty of Italy and the Italians to demonstrate that. There was absolutely no oddness or judgment in any of this. So we'll see how this is all playing out. Again, taking your questions and your comments live. So please share your comments, how things are resonating. If you're having a direct experience like Elizabeth and you have a question or a comment, share it in the comments and we'll, we'll incorporate it throughout the show. Um, so in the theme, so we have hexagrams 26, which is controlled power hyphen stillness. And we have hexagram eight, which is about uniting, this very ancient symbol um, that depicts two people side by side. The first thing that came with this, as we move into these, is they, they started giving me the, the lyrics. It was the song that played, and it's by C.C. Winans, and it's the Alabaster Box. And it said, and the lyrics that I heard was, when he wrapped his love all around us. And of course, the song is speaking to Master Jesus. And so there's an awareness in this moment of that effect, that you don't know what went into this experience. You don't know are the lyrics. I'm going to post them in the show comments. But it's about the alabaster box. It's about the anointing. It's about the promise and what it is like when he wrapped his love all around us. So there's this moment. Remember, they keep talking about auspiciousness, auspicious encounters. And so there's this beauty in these lyrics in this song. And I'll post them so you can see the, the entire lyrics of the song and then an actual video of the song being performed. It's quite magical. And so the alabaster box, and it was about the oils that were... that. Um, Mary Magdalene anointed the feet of Master Jesus with and the love that permeates. And so, and remember, coming together, auspicious encounters, coming together. 
We're coming together with this energy. We're coming to, together with the ideal, with the reality being the, the ideal being the reality. And that was the first song. And let me just bring up this beautiful quote. It says, the way does not speak. It reveals by deeds and events. So remember, it's like the truth. The truth speaks for itself. The way does not speak. The truth doesn't require us to speak. It simply reveals. It reveals by deeds, by events. It reveals. The way does not speak. It reveals. And so as we're going about our day, as Elizabeth shared with us, as she's going about her day, and, and Elizabeth, this is for everyone. It's, it's specifically for you, but it's also for everyone. Once the, once the initial encounter, you've moved from it, look to see what are the energies underneath it, both for yourself, but also them. Can you see their fear? Because their anger, the, the anger and the, the acting out is on the surface. It's an old energy. It's an old way of being. What is it that they're truly dealing with? And, and I may have not made this clear, but they're bringing it back to me again. You were the, you were the recipient, see the alabaster box. You were the recipient. In other words, you were able to receive that and, and purify it, dissipate it, not engage it, rise above it. So you were, you were the, they're saying to me, you were the chosen one in that moment to, again, the forge, the temperance card, to receive that, not to become it, but to allow it to filter, to filter through you so as to purify and extinguish it, to remove it. And this is a choice we have in this moment. Do we, you know, do we react or do we respond? Especially during um, eclipse season. Because remember, we're eclipsing things out. It's a south node. We're eclipsing things out that are of the old. And as not fun, and I understand, as not fun um, as that encounter can be in the moment. The beauty, the grace and the beauty of the moment, hexagram 22, the beauty and the grace of it is that you are the vessel, you were the, the receptive force that was able to receive it and transmute it. Phoenix, ashes, re renew rebirth um, in the moment I understand so just keep going with that so and and here's why let me bring up this beautiful image um, so here we are this is the five-pointed star it's the five-pointed it's the five petals of Venus and she is it, it represents the Queen of Heaven and so when you see this image, there's an absolute beauty to it. There's an abs, it's auspicious. It is all revealing. It is, they're saying self-renewing. And it's the, it's an ancient, ancient, ancient symbol. So the pentagram is the, the five petals of Venus. It is the the orbit, it is the, uh, the orbit of Venus around the Earth. It is the, I believe, the one and only um, symbol where you can make the five-pointed star without lifting your pencil. It's one of these that it's very auspicious, but this is the orbit of Venus, the morning star, the evening star, the queen of heaven. And it's this, and, and the beauty of it, the purity of it, the beauty of it, the auspiciousness of it. So remember, this is the ideal, this is the promise of the new. Keep shining 
Keep incorporating, keep shining this level of energy, this light, this purity, this goodness, no matter what, come what may, no matter what. There's that beautiful um, saying and it, attributed to Master Jesus, and I don't mean this in a derogatory manner, but it's, it, it's the thing of you need not cast pearls before swine. What that means is simply be, be the pearl. You don't have to say, you don't have to argue, you don't have to challenge, you don't have to convince. Simply radiate this queen of heaven, five petals of Venus, star flower energy. And allow that, because again, think about this. You come into an encounter, they're raging and crazy and whatever, and you simply are. You don't even, you, you just radiate a sense of peace and unity and calmness. They will remember that. They will receive that. You need not sully your aura yourself. You need not do that. And even in the intensity of the moment, you are, you're capable. You're, you have a higher depth and grace and gratitude. And they will receive that. And you are able to, and just as they are able to, you know, they're going to be able to purify themselves with that energy, with that light. So again, we have the alabaster box when he wrapped his love all around us, and this five-pointed star of Venus, the queen of heaven. These are the energies that are playing out right now based on the um, hexagrams 26 and, 20, uh, and 8, these current energies. Uh, I break... There we are. We're trying to hold the signal here. See, we're holding it together. <laughs> and, and Elizabeth said, I did end the, conf uh, the confrontation by saying, I hope that you treat your next client with much more compassion and understanding. Exactly. Simply grace. You handled yourself with grace. And that will be the prevailing light. That is the prevailing light. Because item number three, they said the auspicious nature of the way. The auspicious nature of the way. Not my way, not your way, not that person's way, the way. And it, the, the way is auspicious. Austin, majestic. Alabaster box, five-pointed star, the queen of heaven. So in our daily lives, they're talking about the fact, you know, seek and ye shall find is what I'm hearing. And so when we seek out in our mind's eye, in our meditation, in our daily actions, in our responses, not, not reactions, responses, especially during this time, because we're moving, number four, we're moving beyond the nature of the conflict. <laughs> you can't make this up if you tried. I mean, I sit down and I download and I listen. And here are the notes. I mean, here they are. And number four, four is foundational. We are moving beyond, in quotes, the nature of the conflict. At the top of the show, what did Elizabeth share with us? A conflict, an encounter where there was a conflict. And we're moving beyond the nature of the conflict. And they said the old dot, 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 ways pass away. So the old and the old ways, this old energy, old way of being, all of this old passes away. We know this. And, yet, and so, because we're in the know, stillness in knowing, be, be one with the new. Be one with the energies, the purity, the energies of the, the auspiciousness, the magic of the alabaster box, of the oils that were contained in the, the, uh, the beautiful rituals of that. 
the five-pointed star of Venus, the, the petals of Venus, the queen of heaven. Be in unity with that. Because as we move, I was journeying, uh, I was coming from Colorado to Texas. And all along the way, and yes, it's, it's Texas. And it's the Lone Star State. And that five-pointed star is their symbol. And it, all along my path, all along my route, I was driving here. And these five-pointed stars everywhere all along. And I just kept smiling because I'm like, this was coming in prior. The the petals, the five petals of Venus. And all of a sudden I'm journeying to a state and the the journey, the path to it was all of these five pointed stars everywhere. And as I arrived here, I'm at a dear friend's house and I looked over and she has a domino And it's the double one. And I kept looking at it and I kept going, I know there's something about this with this week's show, with this week's energies. And I kept going there together. And I'm going to post this. uh, I'll post it in the comments and the thread so you can get a visual of the image. But it's literally, imagine the domino with the double ones. And it's in perfect, and it's in alabaster. It's like an onyx alabaster perfect unity, togetherness, oneness, and there's there's a joy, there's a, a rich um, element of relationship, of, of harmony, of unity. And this was plain, and, it, and this moving beyond the nature of the conflict, the old ways pass away. So what they're saying to us is we are literally coming into this a double one of the domino, this alabaster, unity, oneness with, and remember above, so picture the domino, and when it's vertical, it's a one up top, it's a one below. So as above, so below. The beauty of this messaging. And then number five, they said, the new order, or yes, the new order emerges, it prevails. So the new order emerges, it prevails. It's what's on tap, not the old, the new. And so we have all of this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up the, because I remember from two weeks ago, I just want to bring up the image. Remember, this is the new. Here's the image of the carousel, the big tent, the hot air balloons, the rising, the whimsicalness of it, the, the enchantment of it, the beauty of it, the youth of it where anything's possible. And we move from the caterpillar to the butterfly. We take flight. We are no longer grounded in the way, meaning held down, held back. Anything is possible. And there's great joy because we're, again, we're moving beyond. We're exceeding the limitations of the past. And, you know, not for naught, We've waited a long time, millennia. We have waited a long time for this moment. And thereby, we come into this knowing, a stillness in knowing, a stillness in the unity of it. In the... Okay. And we're back. <laughs> you know, this is interesting. We've been talking about this with the the beta software that we're utilizing and the interruptions, the the challenges, the conflict, the interruptions. And what's the message? Persevere. Fortitude. Respond. Don't react. See the purpose in everything because everything is purposeful. So... Even in the auspiciousness of this, we're we're in the transition of it. We're we're moving. We're on the bridge. We're moving over. And this is how we keep ourselves whole. This is how we keep ourselves sane. This is how we receive the higher octave, the promise, the way. Let me just incorporate, um, I believe there's a message 
uh, I apologize. I'm, I'm missing some of the messages because it's the system is coming in and out. That being said, um, let me go to hexagram 26 and um, speak to you about controlled power. And think about this. This is the hexagram for today. And then in relation to Elizabeth's example of the confrontation, hexagram 26, Ta Chu, is controlled power, which right off the bat tells you, you hold power. It's how do you yield it? Its action is amplify. So controlled power, magnified, amplified. Its hidden influence is propriety, which means to subordinate. So to be, to use this power, to use this force wisely and correctly. Its underlining cause is gathering together, network. Eight, hexagram eight is unity, coming together, gathering together, network, so as to amplify. And it says your vital force is not wanting, only waiting for you to tap it. True power need not be demonstrated as creative energy is, restra is restrained beneath the mountain of keeping still. So see, we don't need to react, especially right now. Not to react, respond. Ta Chu focuses on the power of silence and stillness. While others are running around demonstrating their power, there's the confrontation. Someone demonstrating their power, yelling, screaming, being confrontational, challenging, rude, angry. While others are running around demonstrating their power, one who is strong has no need to prove anything. Controlled power has propriety as its hidden influence because a will under the sheer steadiness of a mountain allows it to become incredibly powerful. There is also a need for timing, inappropriate expression. Another's insecurity is no match for the power of silence. Let's just repeat that for a second. <laughs> and I love this. You can't make this up. Look at how Elizabeth, in her literal experience, is the energy of this week in this moment. Since controlled power follows innocence, all that is learned from patience and non-action is now ready to be harnessed creatively. Because again, another's insecurity is no match for the power of silence. That will speak volumes to them. It's even in a sense that state of shame, they, it, it shames them. They feel their own shame. The silence will allow them to feel shame of their own uncontrolled power. When the will is in the service of acceptance and the good of all, this deliberate intent is unstoppable. The message we deliver is amplified because our inner truth radiates as the embodiment of Tao. As I said at the top of the hour, Elizabeth's state of being, her joy, her innocence, her, her good nature, it radiates. It's the embodiment of Tao. Combining holding firm, holding steady, holding to heaven's way, the queen of heaven, the he to heaven's way, and nurturing others, this is the hexagram of the true sage. When water meets a dam, it continues to rise in power until it overwhelms whatever blocked its flow. When you renew your willingness to marry to your Tao daily, so in other words, when you commit to this on a daily basis, this state of being, this stillness in knowing, this unity, this the five petals of Venus, the, the queen of heaven, the alabaster box, you become a reservoir 
for enormous creative expression that benefits all. You can draw on a power that need not be demonstrated, but is just so. It speaks for itself. Its simplicity makes everything easy, effortless. It's truly, um, you know, and it talks about becoming the master of your response. So you're able to connect to this higher power, to this unified force, this, this, and it's power, it's limitless power. How are we utilizing it? How are you utilizing it? How are you keeping it in check? How are you taming it? And taming it meaning taming yourself, staying balanced. When innocence is present, it is possible to tame. Innocence cultivates virtue. Yet virtue, virtue renewed daily, ensures a state of innocence. The master said, the perfected nature sustaining itself and enduring is the gateway of life. 10.01.1.0.0.1 at the beginning in this show is the gateway of life. The double zero is representing God, source, spirit in the center. The double ones, the double ones of the domino, the double ones of the 11, the ones are the gateway of life. An innocent perspective allows you to approach the gateway or threshold of perception to become the master of your experiences. And this is, this is so true. Elizabeth gets to choose how this affects her. We get to choose how we see, how we experience something, how we react or respond, how we receive, what's the gift in it. we get to so that we become the master of our own experiences by taming your response you are able to tame experience controlled power is the hexagram of the true sage and that messaging is coming along in all of this and and they showed me the domino the double one domino and then the five-pointed star, the pentagram, the, the star of Venus. And they had the two next to each other, and I'll put this up later. And they said, these two elements, the double one domino and the five-petal star of Venus, the, the five-petal flower of Venus, queen of heaven, equals unity, destiny, triumph. So these two things together, these two um this divine marriage, this divine unity, this divine oneness. And remember, as above, so below. The energy, the spirit, the energy, the promise of Master Jesus and ourselves. Unifying, coming together, flowering. Unity, destiny, triumph. Triumph. Not, not conflict in the sense of, you know, like, not despair, destiny, triumph. And all of the energies today, so let me just come back to this really quickly. So all of the energies today are speaking to the promise, these auspicious moments and times. We are in eclipse season. So remember to be mindful, to respond, not react, to stay in a state of stillness and knowing to demonstrate your power in the most auspicious manner, in the most auspicious way. Because that is what is going to lead you to triumph, to success. The challenger, the old way, it's done. No mas, no more, (laughs) finito. And let me just bring in hexagram number eight, which is about uniting. It's pi and it's uniting. And we've had this before. It's hidden influence is 23 to split apart so as to regenerate. It's underlining cause is 14, great possessing, to shine, to radiate. 
So this is what we were speaking about. And it says, when you merge the world in here with the world out there, your destiny is revealed. They're talking about unity, destiny, triumph. Not failure, faith, triumph. And it says, holding together or uniting is something that plays out in the way we pursue and are pursued by others, but also how we find a sense of union within. Remember the domino, the double ones, the unity. Where the previous hexagram, she, army, had to do with organizing the will around the collective, pi, uniting, places the focus more on uniting the diverse aspects of the individual or unifying all aspects of the individual with others. You cannot know the love of another until you discover self-love. You are called to be unified with others, with life, and most importantly, with all aspects of who you are. So there's this beauty in the uniting that, and, and the holding together means uniting. It's this beauty where we're being asked and called to unify ourselves, to come together. And there's a beauty with where I am right now. I'm, I'm at a dear friend's house, her mother was a dear, dear friend and colleague of mine. And she passed a few years ago. And this is the first time that, that we're gathering and another dear friend is coming um, this coming Sunday. And what are we doing? We're uniting. We're coming together. For the first time in years, we speak and see each other all the time. But there's this. there was a knowing this morning. And, and one of the things that our dear friend, Pam, who, who has passed, one of her key words was stillness. And it hit me this morning very strongly, this stillness. She used to always say, in order to hear, be still. Sit and listen in stillness and quiet so that you're able to hear. And so this is a really beautiful moment personally on a, on a, mic, on a micro for myself in the, the absolute auspiciousness of the moment, the, the serendipitousness, the stars, you know, the, the five petaled star of Venus. Here's the queen of heaven meeting with the double ones with this gateway, coming together, unifying, unity, a unity of experience, a, a renewal, and that we are all, we'll, we'll all be together. That for me personally is incredibly auspicious. And so I'm sharing that with you because, again, that's what's on offer. This is what they're wanting everyone to see because it's, it is about the journey, not the destination. We will get there. However, the, the getting there, the destination, is the embodiment of the, journey, of the journey. It's to see that we get the destination, the ultimate victory, the ultimate triumph, the outcome, in hexagram 10, treading in the walking, in the journey. How? Through stillness, through controlled power, through stillness, through listening, through unity, through uniting. Because how are we altered by the experience? Other numbers, the, the today's numbers culminate in 15. 15 is about humility. 22 is about grace and beauty. Six, as we know, 2022, a six, is about conflict or destiny. Destiny meaning the fate of time. The, 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 and we're moving out of time. We're, we're moving beyond it. So the arc of destiny is forward. That's the promise. So I'm just asking them if there's anything. If you have any final comments, please put them in. I'm just listening to see... Because they're, they're wanting us to realize, they're asking us to realize what's on offer is what they're saying. They're asking us to contemplate, do we recognize, do we see what's on offer? If we don't, or if we're having a problem, a challenge doing that, stillness in, in knowing. Sit in stillness and listen. 
Look for the, the serendipity, for the signs that are around you. Like on my drive down here, the number of five-petaled stars. And it just had me beaming because I knew, I know, I know how auspicious it is. I know that there's something really remarkable about that symbol. And that it's, the way it's coming to me is, is that it's mine, it's ours. It's for us. Then to see the double ones, the domino, the double ones, to know that that is for us. To be in such oneness, such unity with ourselves, higher source. And, and no matter, you know, this is not from a religious standpoint, but, you know, the promise that is spoken to about Master Jesus. There are many, whether it be Buddha, Allah, Master Jesus, God, Source, Symphony, there's a promise. And that promise is demonstrated by the alabaster box, by the five-pointed star, so by the Queen of Heaven. And to realize that we're moving beyond the nature of the conflict. We need not get caught up in it. You know, they're, <laughs> they're saying to me, when this when the ship is sinking, do you go down with the ship or do you swim? You know, do you do you save yourself? Do you do you go and swim? Do you seek a way of of saving yourself? Of of and that's very true. And what do they say about water? You don't flail and you know and fight and everything. You float, you surrender, and you float, you bob. You let your, your, you let your body, your being, bob on the ocean, on the water, so as to sustain, survive, triumph. Because to be in conflict, to be in challenge, to fight in that way, to fight against the tide, to fight to go down with the ship. Okay. Maybe perhaps it's noble, but uh, you know, they're 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 giving us the example of that's that's float. Save yourself, float. So auspicious times, aus and I know, I, I I hear you, I see the news. I, I, I see it, I, I read it, I know the world events that are occurring, and it is not to be ignorant or naive of them. However, the messaging, the very strong messaging is, we're moving beyond that. We need not engage it in a negative manner, in a, in a manner that is reactive. We can simply sit in the stillness of knowing the outcome is assured the old ways pass away. A new order emerges and prevails. And that's auspicious. I mean, that that in and of itself makes me just, you know, buoyant and happy and because that's the that's the truth. And we need only, they're saying we need only walk the talk. We need only walk the walk, walk the talk. So that's where we are. There's this great abundance, this auspiciousness, this, again, this fly like an eagle. Um, and I just want to bring up, I'm going to bring this up so that we see some of these images. It is the images, and I've been showing this in the last couple of shows. It's the star card. It is the auspiciousness of and, and this star that you see, it's the eight-pointed star. This is associated with Venus. So the five-pointed star is the orbit, the flower of Venus. And this eight-petaled star is associated with Venus. So here's the star card. It is the soma. It's the abundance. It's the new. It's the everything that's being delivered to us. The middle card is the judgment card. It is us receiving. Look at how in our in the purity of our being, in our quote unquote nakedness, 
We are heralding, we are receiving those gifts. We are being called the trumpet. We're being called to attention to receive. And what we're receiving, there's the four of cups on the left. It's not the three cups down below. Look, he's he's pensy and pensive and moody and you know, and he's looking at the three cups. He, she are, is looking at the three cups, dismayed, you know, annoyed, agitated, because these things aren't working. These things aren't doing it for me anymore. These things aren't sustaining me. And the, the one cup, the cup coming in from the hand of source, the hand of heaven, is in a certain way being ignored. However, that's the cup that's filled by the star that the, the, the temperance card, judgment, I'm sorry, the judgment card is speaking to, is heralding. There's a new cup. It's like there's a new sheriff in town. There's a new cup. There's the way, the new. And that's arriving. That has arrived. It, it is playing out as we speak. And let me just bring up the, the lighthouse. This is Turnberry Lighthouse. It's a photograph by Red McGregor. Um, it was sent to me by a dear friend, Alicia. Again, look at the auspiciousness, the radiance and the auspiciousness of the central sun, the light illuminating. And the lighthouse represents safe harbor, safety, home, where and look at the beauty, the verdant green and the rocks and Mother Earth and everything. And you can see the two, as above, so below. Here they are, and the lighthouse. It's as if the two are speaking. You know, the sunburst behind the clouds and the lighthouse are, can, are speaking together. So imagine between them, one, zero, zero, one. This lighthouse, this way, this gateway, as they spoke to earlier. There it is. So thank you all so much for joining from beautiful Austin, Texas with me and from around the globe. Um, I'm looking, I have a special guest that's going to be with me next week. And so we are going to come to you live together next week. All right, everyone. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, we will be joining you. I'll be back next week um, in Austin with a special guest. And until then, be well, be secure, be confident, and be still in your knowing. Be still in your knowing because it is all about unity and we are arriving in the new. We are in the new and uh, it is about the auspicious nature of the way. So thank you all for joining and being patient with the technical difficulties. See, in the, in the light of challenge, everything is purposeful. And thank you all for sharing your comments. And, and thank you uh, to the, uh, the unseen, the, the Spirit, Source, and Symphony for the beautiful tapestry, the unseen tapestry. And we're going to do a show on this. How Elizabeth in France leads off the show this week with her experience and how intricately woven it is to the actual energies. So just be mindful. Remember you're in eclipse season and uh, the, the next one culminates on the 8th of November um, and they have an arc of about six months. So just be really, really mindful um, and be really, really kind with yourselves. All right. Be resolute in your knowing and we'll see you next week. Thank you all so much for joining.